ahead and start recording. And here's how we're going to work. <coughs> Excuse me. In the webinar, if you have a question, go ahead and ask a question. But I'm going to stop and answer it. And these are only supposed to be short little webinars that cover a couple of things so that you can kind of absorb those a little bit better. So I want to start with this. Our support is going to be changing on how we handle gener generation support in general. Most of the time you guys call in, you get thrown into voicemail, and there are a lot of you. There are over 10,000 generation software owners. So because it was so overwhelming and because we do not teach over the phone, um, we also don't teach in email. So those of you who have you know, emailed me know what you get back from me is here's a video or you'll get a short answer, or you'll get pointed to the manual pages. And we're going to start with some of these things, okay? Because I don't want you to feel like you're not supported. It's just that the support needs to be handled in a specific way. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to start with this. Under the support tab, sign up for our newsletter. If you are not on it, make sure you are. There's also a Facebook page, so all you have to do is click on that newsletter, and there's Facebook, and there's your free newsletter, right? So make sure you're signed up for both of these. If you're not on Facebook, you know, make sure you're at least in the newsletter, okay? Under support, there's support FAQs. In the support FAQs, these are the list of all the subjects, right? And these actually will be updated later. But if you can't find what you need here, please click here to go to our support page. And here is why I need you to contact me through the support page. I need a lot of information from you. And this all goes into a database. So put your date in, your name, your address. You know, I need to know all of this information. And I know to you it may seem ridiculous, but if I don't have a dongle number here from now on, we're not going to respond because it takes us 20 minutes to find that dongle number. So if you don't know it, you know, okay, put a note, don't know. But don't make that a standard practice because really, you know, we need to know what version you're on. I also need to know your computer information. And if you don't know this exactly either, here's a link where you can locate it. Um, but bare minimum, I need to know your operating system, okay? Otherwise, it makes it very difficult to, you know, help you or at least maybe be able to point you in the right direction. So please start using this form. Okay, these go straight to my email. Um, if you have a travel dongle, make sure you put these things in here. And there's a little button at the end that says submit support request, okay? Then I know if I need to call you, if I need to make an appointment to remote in, and this is going to streamline your support quite a bit, all right? Now, under the support tab, remember, look on the support FAQs. Because if I get a question that has to do with one of these FAQs, which they're going to be growing here, I'm going to refer you back to this page, okay? So make sure you tell me what's going on, tell me any error messages you get, and things like that, so I know whether I need to call you, or if I can just send you a quick video, or if I can send you a link, okay? So this is important for you guys to know. Also, under support, there is a Generations Technique webinars, okay, and there's a how-to FAQ videos, and, you know, we're actually probably going to remove that and just leave it at the YouTube page, and we're going to get to that in a second, too. Generations Technique webinars. This is where the webinars are listed. If you click on these links, it takes you to the last webinars, right? So let's go back. You know, here's my, you know, April webinar. All right, that was on letters, so let's go back. Now, you know, we have sometimes in these posted little links, like click here to download the practice images from the webinar. So that way, if there's images involved, you can download those as well, and then you can watch the video from here. And I'm going to tell you a little secret about the video. When you click on this to play it, see where it has this? And I'm going to pause this. You can click on this to go to full screen. You could go to YouTube, and if you want to see this in a better mode, you can click on that and say, you know, quality, okay? Like, I might want to watch this at, you know, HD, because that's what my monitor is. 
All right, so that's where these videos will be posted. You can see there's the June 30, 23rd link. It should be posted later tonight because we're doing some work on the website. Um, but it'll definitely be there by tomorrow. If you are in here, you have already registered, so you don't need that, okay? Um, you can't really download them, but you can watch the videos, all right? So I want you to know where those were. Okay, under support, if something happens to your dongle, here's your dongle protection, and here's the link to protect your purchase if you don't have dongle insurance, okay? Um, you know, webinar workshops, you know, that link is going to be leaving because we're not really taking any more signups right now, and I'm not sure why that's active. But anyway, so I want you to know where those are. All right, I think I have a couple of quick questions, so let me see what these are. Gail is asking us if when I'm saying that if you have two dongles, one is a travel dongle. If you purchased a travel dongle, then your second dongle is going to be like 1-5 something. It's a real long number. It'll say GTRV. If you have two dongles with two different numbers, a lot of times we'll consider a second one a travel dongle, okay? But you need to get a hold of us so we know to mark that. Some people have actually bought two systems, and I'm not sure why, but they bought two full systems, and we'll look at that if you want to consider future upgrades as that, okay? But nonetheless, you know, this is where your support stuff is, and like I said, ignore the workshops because that's us actually going to be leaving. But this page right here, you know, if you're having a minor problem, you know, look at this before you contact us because I'm going to have to refer you back here at this point. It becomes a time factor now. I'm happy to answer questions, but like I said, we cannot educate you over, you know, email or the phone. Also, if you come all the way down to the end of the page on any page, let me get to a shorter page here because that one's pretty, pretty big actually. Um, on any of our pages, right, any of them, you can do this. Scroll to the bottom and there's a YouTube link. There's also a Facebook link. If you go to YouTube, these are where a lot of our videos and there's playlists and they're organized as best as we can, okay? There's also a whole bunch of older videos, but, you know, there's Generations version 2.0. This is how to install it and, you know, we'll start adding more videos and replacing these older ones, but I'm going to mark them as version 2.0. So if you have 2.0, you know where to go, and if you don't, then you need to use some of these other links, okay? So you have all of these things and all of these videos that are available, all right? So start using, you know, some of the resources that you have. Barbara's asking if we miss um, past sessions, can you access these? Yes, you can access them on the website. The, and Paul is asking if the original dongle number carries over to the 2.0 update. Um, the key file does not change your dongle number, okay? That dongle is just upgraded, you know, via that key, but it remains the same file. And to get back to Barbara, here is where you find these support and generations technique webinars. They're all going to be right here. You click on that link, it takes you to that webinar. Click back, it takes you back to the menu. So this video will be posted here, okay? So now the next thing I want you to do is I want to look at the members area. And the reason I want to look at the members area is this. I get a lot of people who have forgotten that they have a member account or haven't used their member account in so long that they don't even know what to do. So when you email me, you know, I don't always have access to your account information. And a lot of times, if you haven't used it in a long time, you no longer have an account. So when you come here, if you don't know your account information, please click on unable to access your account. Put in your information and see if you get an email from us. If you don't, go ahead and make a new account, all right? Then you're going to get an activation email. If you make a new account, you have to click on the activation link to activate your account to be able to log in. If you don't get one, check your spam folder. If you put unable to access your account right here, then watch for the email. They're almost instant from the system. And if you don't see them, check your spam folder, okay? If you need to register, you just click on that link. So let me log in. My screens are going to look a little different than yours. 
and I'm going to show you where to find things, okay? All right, on this page, like I said, some of mine are going to look a little different than yours, but one thing that all of you will have is generation software owners, all right? Version 2.0 downloads, version 1.0 plus updates. All right, I'm going to go here because everybody can actually get this. This is the full install. You can't get that unless you've upgraded. But this new manual right here, it installs into the Generations program. And by tomorrow, I will have another link up that will have the new manual in just a PDF format. Okay, this, if you have version 2.0, you need to install it into your software. So if you have version 2.0 and you have not downloaded this manual, get to your, your member's site and get this manual because it installs into your generations program and it's important. If you haven't upgraded, you can still download this manual, just some of the things will not pertain to your version. The, whole, the manual has been completely redone. And no, Margaret, you are certainly not too late to join. So the whole manual, um, the manual will not be, um, the PDF manual and the manual that installs into the software, they're really the same thing. The manual has been completely rewritten. And while some of the information may be the same, some of it has been expanded on, and as you know, that manual that you had printed has been kind of added to and added to and added to and added to, and what we did with this manual, and I'm going to show it to you when we get into the software, was make it so that if we change pages, because there's corrections or additions, then you just update the manual in your software by downloading a new one, or you can download it and just print the pages. We'll mark what pages changed if you want to print this and put it into a notebook. Gail, you're asking what the cost of the upgrade is, and I'm going to give you an email address that you can um, email me, and I will, you know, let you know. Right now the sale is off, but I can work with you a little bit. So here is the email address that you need to email to find out about um, the upgrade. Ready? I'm just going to send this out to all of you. Now don't use this to contact me for gener for technical support because this is not going to get a technical support kind of response, okay? Uh, Margaret, I'm not sure what you need help with. Um, are you seeing the screen? 527 is the latest manual, and we will send out notes, Linda, whenever we upgrade that. Cynthia, get a hold of um, our office and ask to speak with Tony Matina. And, you know, he's managed to be able to get through to Larry on a couple of things, and Larry has to approve your upgrade. If you are a pro software owner, We'll be sending you out a note because there's some changes that are going to come for you guys. And Susan, I think you're pro, but um, for home versions, we are not reprinting the manual. You can request a print manual um, if you really want one printed, but honestly, you, you might be better off just to take it to Kinko's because the cost is about $60. Um, Margaret, I'm not, there's nothing you can do in the webinar except kind of watch what's going on on my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Mame, if you have a Mac computer, you need to get, you know, a Windows emulator, and there are a bunch of them out there. A lot of our Mac users, I'm trying to think what they use. Um, I, I would check with Mac. They probably have a better idea of what's a good one for you. Okay, Susan, you should, you're going to get a note from us because there are some changes. Um, Margaret, you should be able to see the screen, and I don't, you might want to go out and come back in if you can't. Um, Annette, I'm not going to go through that right now because the pro version is actually going to be replaced with the commercial version. So if you have a commercial machine with the sequence attachment, it's probably worth getting. If not, then Parallels, that's it. The Mac emulator, thank you, Patricia, is called Parallels. And that's the one that everybody seems to be wrecking, rec recommending here. The upgrade works with Windows 10. Technically, it works on XP. I have a 98 user who says it works, but we don't promise anything on 98 or XP. However, 
I have two people using 98s, it, it seems to work. And, you know, it comes down to your resources, okay? Um, and, Terry, well, I'll, I'm going to explain a couple things that are going on. Also, MAME, the other one is VM, VMware Fusion. It's an excellent uh, Mac or Windows emulator, too. Okay, so you're good, Margaret. Okay. All right, so... Um, Junis, I can't guarantee anything on an XP, and I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, it depends on what your resources are, but Windows isn't supported anymore, so there's no guarantee of anything on an XP. Now, I have people who use XP that have no problems. And like I said, I have 298 users, which kind of blew my mind that they were able to run the software, okay? So it should work on, on both your machines. Okay, Trish Turner said that you know Mame is saying to look at Parallels, and she had a lot of issues, but she found that VMware is much better for the Mac anyway. All right, so now we're going to kind of stop with those questions. Now, you guys have the support thing down. Don't answer yes, because, you know, I'm pretty sure that you guys have the support thing down. This is going to speed up your support, because I average over 200 emails a day, and over 30 to 40 phone calls a day. So it's gotten to the point where uh, there's just no way to handle it without making this the way technical support really should be, okay? So I don't want you to think I don't want to talk to you guys. It's just that it's a matter of time. Another thing I'm going to say, and I'm not saying any of you guys have done this, so I don't want you to feel that I'm pointing fingers, but please do not, you know, expect immediate support. We go in a queue and I just told you how many emails I get a day. Usually we're pretty good. We try to do this within 24 hours, but just bear that in mind, okay? And I know at some point sometimes you get very frustrated, but bear that in mind, all right? So if you don't get an immediate response, I'm not ignoring you, you know, but you know, I just want you guys to know um, if it's something that is truly an emergency, mark that on your form, okay? All right, so now, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, we do need a bigger staff, Carol, except for this. The assumption when you buy software is this. Yes, there's lessons, and we've provided a ton of webinars this year, um, and yes, there's support, and, you know, but there's technical support, and there's taking the time to read the manual, watch the videos, and, you know, work through it. You know, so there's kind of a little bit of, you know, like a personal responsibility in learning this. So, so even with the bigger staff, you know, we, we kind of looked at how the support is going, and we're going to do more webinars, but it comes down to, you know, there's technical support, and then there's pointing you in the right direction, and then there's providing support like this. <coughs> we also have, for those of you who really want to get into learning something, and I've got a ton of signups, so we're having our Sweet 16 half, Happy Birthday to Us retreat this year, okay? And that is going to be hands-on fun. I mean, really, truly, it's hands-on in our office. You can see it's Thursday and Friday all day long, and then a big chunk of the day on Saturday. So if you really want to get some lessons on generations, we cover as much as we can um, on, um, you know, everything that we can, basically. We go as far as we can in the software. It's project-based, but I also kind of take you guys through some basics. Because I don't believe in just saying, oh, click here. Okay, you don't learn anything. And Janice, I'm going to agree with you there. All right, so if you're interested in hands-on, I don't even care if you guys get together. Just go to Software and Generations Retreat. But if you notice, if you bring a buddy, so if you guys want a buddy up here, you get a discount. It's a pretty good discount, okay? And, you know, last year we did this. It's the first time we did it in our office. And this year we plan on doing a little bit more than what we did. And <laughs> so I'd love to see you guys 
you know, come in here and, and have some fun with us and learn the software hands-on and get to know some of the other people that are in the webinars because there's nothing like the buddy system on learning how to use software, okay? So, you know, I'm going to stop and just see if there's any quick questions. Um, Connie's asking if there'll be another retreat besides this one. Not this year. Um, it's tough in the winter. You know, we do have a commercial side of the company and, you know, so it's kind of tough. You know, that's why we ended up in August. Um, we had tried, looked at, you know, trying to do an earlier event, but there's just a lot of events that go on. So um, this will be the only one we offer. We might change the date a little bit next year, but this is about it. And Brenda's asking where we are located, and we are located in St. Louis. So, you know, you know, come and have some fun. We have some pretty good hotel rates that are right near the office with shuttles. We have people that have taken turns shuttling each other around last year, and they just all had a really good time. So, you know, if you get a chance, you know, we do, we'll start asking people, do you want to room up with somebody? Can you provide a ride? Do you need a ride? Are you getting a car? Are you driving in? And we, you know, we try to communicate um, with all of the people that are signed up for this event, and that's going to be starting up here, you know, probably right after the 4th, we'll start, you know, communicating and getting guys all in communication with each other. And Lynn is saying she went last year, and she had a really great time. She can't make it this year, but it was fun and educational. Thank you. Um, Carla said she also came last year, and yes, she would learn additional information. Um, last year was kind of the first time we did it. Now we're a little more structured on what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be the same exact thing as last year. That would just be dull as dirt. Um, I'll change that date. We, we kind of put that cutoff date basically to make sure that we didn't get overloaded on people. And I, I have to go and look at all of that. But if you want to sign up, sign up. Because we made the decision that if there are more people than can fit in our building, that we'll go ahead and we will get, um, you know, like a hotel and stuff. So, you know, so if you want to sign up, ignore that cutoff date and go sign up. And Marilyn, not this year and maybe not next year, but we had talked about doing New Hampshire because we have an office there. But this year is just, you know, it's kind of tough to do that. Um, Jenny, if you didn't get the email, um, make sure you sign up for a newsletter. Um, Sandy, I'll give you the list of topics that are covered right now. We're going to learn to deal with images. That's number one. We're going to learn all of our tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this in a design format. Some of it's here's how you do this because I don't believe in stressing people out. And here's how you apply it. So, you know, we ended up, I think, last year with two or three designs and... Um, and everybody seemed to do really well with that. So, you know, we'll cover lettering, we're going to cover manual punch, we're going to cover how to use the automatic tools to your benefit. We cover good images, bad images, and really, really ugly bad images. And, you know, the whole goal is just to make you more comfortable. I think we covered gradient shading quite a bit last year, too. And, you know, so those are some of the subjects. Okay, now I want to get off of this subject and let's go over to the software, okay? I don't know how many of you in here have version 2 and who don't. Okay, if you're interested in upgrading because you don't have it, um, you know, I'm going to do this real quick. I'll give you my email. Ready? Okay, that is my email if you are interested in upgrading and you don't have this. You know, I'll, I'll send you an email back and let you know. All right, so I'm going to cancel this. And what I want to do is show you some of the new things real quick in the software, and then we're going to take a look at how to do a couple of different things with editing. We're just going to play a little bit today. So new, new help things in the software. If you have an older version, like I said, you could, you know, look tomorrow on that member's area, and I'll have the new manual print or posted. Um, but in the software, it's a live manual. Now you go to help and open manual. And when you open the manual, what you get is this PDF file, but now you can replace it. And you're, when you first open it, it kind of goes to here, right? If you notice, there's little plus symbols. Here's my table of contents. You can scroll through that. Here's a plus symbol for the subjects in, you know, version or chapter one. And at the bottom is an index. 
So I can scroll through here and I can say, oh, you know, if I want to learn how to do, you know, photo one color, I go to chapter five. And see these little plus symbols, you can turn them on or off. I go to five and, you know, look at what's going on here. And it says, you know, photo contours on 518. So, you know, there's quick properties, you know, let me kind of, I'm going to click here. I'm not sure why the photo thing isn't showing up, but I can scroll through just by using my mouse. And here is 518, right? And you can see, you know, this is now 8 by 10 size paper. So if we replace things and you've printed it, you can just print those pages, right? So that's number one. Number two is help and help topics. The reason we change to live online help is this. Windows 10 does not open the old help files on all computers, and in fact, on most computers it won't. And we figured it's just going in that direction. So this is now online, and this is going to be finished up by next week, but we can link videos to this as well. All right, so there's your help options. Now, also help is Generations website, video tutorials, which takes you to our um, YouTube page, okay? All right, so this is where we are right now. Now, if we go to... Um, you know, look at some of our editing tools. Like if we've looked at what we've done in these past webinars, we've dealt with bad images and good images. We've dealt with a little bit of, um, you know, manual punch and not a lot, but we're going to deal with more of that as we go. And we've dealt with lettering, but what we haven't dealt with is editing and, or at least not a lot. So I'm going to just use circles. And the reason I'm just using a circle is because it's easy to control. And if I make a mistake, I am not going to get stressed out about this. So when I go to create a circle, what I end up with is area. And if you click on that, you notice you can change it to a line. So I can actually make a circle that's just a line. But I'm going to stay within area. And it's an auto judge. If I come down here and say, well, you know, I want it to be a complex fill. And I can click here and say, yeah, and I really, I want it to be pink. So now I can make my circle. And I'll press escape, and that's based on my thread catalog, the color pink, okay, which is down here. And we're going to talk about that in a second, too, because that pertains to both software systems. And what I'm going to do pertains to both software systems, okay, the old one and the new one. So I am, you know, here's my circle. If we look at it in 3D, it's just a plain old circle, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my main editing tool. And in order to use the main editing tool, this has to be selected. So if you have something like this, you need to come over and right click on this area. But if you're using a line or it's small and it's hard to get to, if you noticed over in your film strip, that's highlighted. Well, if you can't get to this easily, you can come over in the film strip and left click and it'll select it the same. So now I'm going to go into my editing tools and we're going to talk about these briefly. If I go to view outline, here's what I have. It goes into the shaded, you know, format. This shows me that I'm in edit mode. And view outline on the editing feature here, um, <coughs> excuse me, means that <coughs> sorry, means that I can change the shape of the outline. That's what view outline's about. When you're digitizing, this is an outline form. It's like a vector format, right? It's not really stitch data yet. It just gives you the preview of that. It's put the stitch information in there, but really it's an outline. So here's my outline, and I'm in view outline. If you watch my mouse, see view outline. And if you forget what icon, if you just remember view, and you click on that menu, there's my view outline option. All right, so when I go into this mode, if you notice, the outline menu appears here. And I have a lot of options. If you're a menu person, here's the outline menu. Okay? If you are a right-click person, you don't even have to leave here. You just right-click and you get the outline menu. We're going to talk about some of these things. There are many, many ways to adjust things. There's adjust with new points. There is adjust with the line, adjust with an arc. You know, and then you can create an outline from the edges. 
you can create a line from an area, which we're going to look at in a second. You can fill holes, if there were any. You can create holes a bunch of different ways. You can divide with a line and divide with a curve. So you have a lot of options. But your first one is Edit Outline Mode. Edit Outline Mode goes along with this icon right here. Edit Outline Mode puts you into a node view. And you can see there are the various nodes that have made this shape, right? If you mouse over a node, you can, you know, you'll get a bullseye cursor and you can left click and drag that little point to a new position. Bullseye cursor, press and hold your left mouse button and drag it to a new position. Okay. You can also right click on it and delete the point if you want to or you can smooth it. So we'll go ahead and smooth that. See what happens? It's taken out a couple of points and it has smoothed each side of the line. So I'm going to click on this and show you something else. See these arrows? Each point is going to have arrows, even if it's a square or straight line. These arrows appear. And these arrows affect half of this line. So if I need to adjust this a little bit, it's going to affect half. See the bowing? It's only half that, you know, as I curve it, it's going to be reshaped. That point may move to adjust, but this point controls this half of the line. See what's going on? And it'll place new points as needed to navigate the curve. So this point, this arrow controls half of this line. This arrow controls half of this line. See how it just controls part of the curving? And if I come in here, this one controls the other half of that line. So when you go to curve that, these arrows should be used as minor nudges, minor things, right? Just minor. They shouldn't be used to adjust this whole line. However, you can make some interesting shapes doing that. Now, with that being said, if I wanted to take this segment here between these two points and straighten it or curve it, I don't even have to add a new point. I can right click on this curve line and just drag it straight or I can drag it to a new curve. It's not going to create a point. It's just taking the whole line and arrows on both sides are getting adjusted. So if I click here, see how that's straight? And if I click here, that arrow is now straight too. So, however, node editing isn't always your fastest option. If you have a simple thing with simple nodes in it, then it might be but there are faster tools in the editing. All right, so to generate the changes to the shape you made, remember to generate. Okay, so there are the changes to the shape that I made. So there's my change, right? Now, what I did, because I just had a question about what I did to create this. No, I didn't use a shortcut tool. This toolbar is your create toolbar. Here's your lettering, monogramming, insert an image, insert from a scanner source or twain, and these are your manual punching tools. Okay, these are the reshape tools, or these are the quick shape tools, right? So this is what I used, but if you noticed, there's a create menu option too. It just doesn't give you as many options. All right, so do you guys have any questions about what I did and what those nodes do because I'll be honest with you node editing sometimes is your best option but if you're gonna spend an hour reshaping something with nodes then you gotta wonder if there's a better option and there definitely is we tend to get into bad habits um, no Jenny on the nodes you can select one we get into bad habits and I've seen people who will spend hours in outline view and node editing tweaking every single node and you know and you could have hundreds of nodes on a less simple shape than this so I can work in this view because if you notice even though I'm in the outline view and in edit mode I still have an outline menu so I can use the menu 
or even in this mode, I can right click and say, well, you know what, maybe this is better. Adjust with new points or adjust with the line or an arc, right? So let's go to adjust with new points. Adjusting with new points means I need to select where I want to start the adjustment and where I want to end it. So if I left click on the outline, see where that bullseye cursor is, if you see it right here? If I left click on the outline, I get a green node. That's where I want to start. If I come up here and left click up here, I get another green node, but you have to left click on the outline. You can see as I mouse over these lines, it's beginning to highlight blue. Well, I mouse over the segment that I want to change. This was my first point. That's where I start. This was my second point. That's where I'm ending. So I mouse over this line and left click on it when it turns blue. And see, this is attached to my mouse now. And I can come in here and right click to make curves, left click to make straight segments, and I can do a combination, right? But you can see what I'm doing here. When I press enter, press escape to turn off that tool and generate, I'm able to reshape this however I want. And the nice thing is that that original outline is behind there, so I can use that as a guide if I need to. Okay, so that's adjust with new points. Now I'm going to go back into view outline, and I'm going to go to the outline menu, either here or right clicking, and I'm going to say adjust with the line. And adjust with the line is exactly what it says. I be, place my, you know, left click on the outline here on where I want to start adjusting and a left click on where I want to end adjusting. And I mouse over and see that blue highlight. That's the section or line segment I want to adjust. And with this one, I just place a left click and it's an instant straight segment. So remember to turn off the tools, you have to press escape. Okay, so if I need to adjust something so that it's perfectly straight, then that's what I do. Now, sometimes it's just easier to straighten things and then adjust them if there's a million nodes on there, okay? So if I wanted to adjust that a little bit, you know, I could, go from here and say, well, you know, I really need a little curve. And just right click and drag the line. Or I needed it straightened to get rid of a bunch of nodes and there I now I can curve this to what I need. Or if I left click on that, I can actually place a straight node and I can adjust this way as well. All right, so, you know, simplifying the section that you need to reshape, if they're simple reshapes, that's good. Repunching the whole section, that's good too, and that's adjust with new lines or new points. All right, so let's go back into View Outline and go to our menu. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, you know what, let's adjust with an arc. And that is exactly what it says. Left click where you want to begin, left click where you want to end, and we'll go all the way up here. Mouse over and pick the segment you want and left click and drag the arc out or drag the arc in, but it's going to smooth. See how that shape is irregular? It's going to smooth this shape into an arc instantly. And the tools don't have to always be turned off. Maybe I want to adjust this segment here. You can continue adjusting by placing those two left clicks, left clicking on the line that you want to adjust, and left clicking to end it. When you're done, press escape. And go ahead and generate. So, you know, I'm going to leave, like, I want you to play with these tools because in the scope of reshaping things, these are great tools to play with. And pick a circle, and if you torture the circle to death, who cares? But practice those adjust with new lines, adjust with, you know, um, or adjust with new points, adjust with the line, and adjust with an arc tools, and get comfortable with them. We have um, another webinar next week. We're going to kind of continue along the editing lines. We're going to start looking at slicing things and why you slice things or 
even lettering, what's the benefit of slicing lettering sometime to get what you want? So do you guys have any quick questions before I kind of end the webinar? I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.